Welcome to Fandomonium, where if you love something, we love Captain Marvel, do you? I, uh, You know what? If it's Brie Larson, oh yes I do. Hells yes! Yep. I am Ralph Cornett, this is Drew McQueenie, and we are going to talk about the possible, it's not official yet, but Brie Larson is in talks to play Captain Marvel. Variety, Variety broke the story yesterday afternoon, said that she is in talks, and um, we knew that there was uh, somebody that Marvel had, had become fixated on, that they knew that they wanted... I had heard that they, they made the deal. It sounds like that is not the case. Um, and it's exciting. Uh, yeah. It really does feel like, and this is, it's weird. It's one of those things that is true of modern Hollywood, but you win your Oscar, and the first thing you do is turn around and try and figure out what the blockbuster move is to cash in that that Oscar. Yes. And I think Larson's being very smart about what she, you know, she was shooting King Kong when she won. And I think as a choice, this is the role that every actress in that age range has been chasing in town for the last year. So just to give a little bit of context, A, Brie Larson won an Academy Award this past year for her role in Room, which yes. is an excellent film. And if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. She was also great in Short Term 12. She's wildly Phenomenal. funny. Um, she She's just been poised to explode. And what's interesting here is that a lot of people were thinking that Emily Blunt was going to be the one to ultimately get this role, which that full metal, what is it? Full metal bitch? Full metal bitch from- Full uh, metal bitch. From Edge of Tomorrow, yeah. It would have been amazing, but probably, and I say this cautiously, is past the age that they're looking at. And the reason is, is they're probably looking for someone to play Captain Marvel for the next 10 or 12 years. At least, um, and that's, that's, it, it, and I understand what you're you're being cautious. Emily Blunt is not too old for anything. Emily yes. Blunt is an actress who is at, in the prime of both her gift and her craft right now. Yeah. Um, I can't and wait for Girl hot. on the Train. I can't wait for. Um, uh, oh, what was the one that we just uh, found out she's doing? Uh, Mary Poppins. Yeah. Uh, and I think she's perfect for that. I, Emily Blunt's in fine shape. She missed her Marvel moment, which is really frustrating. She was meant to play Black Widow. Yeah, and, and it was a case of uh, scheduling where Gulliver's Travel simply would not let her out of the contract. Uh, she was stuck on that film and ended up not playing Black Widow for Iron Man 2, where she was initially their choice. Mm -hmm. um, I've got to imagine the frustration is enormous, um, just from a, a the sense of all the plays she would have gotten so far. Like, it, it's such a good role. And yeah. But then, of course, the question is, would it have been the same thing? Scarlet brings a lot of Scarlet to that role. Absolutely. One of the reasons that the Russos have written her the way they have in Winter Soldier and in Civil War especially is because they saw that. They really liked that. And Marcus McFeely, they're, re they're reacting to Scarlet. They're reacting to what she's playing. Who knows if Blunt had played it, if it would have been the same thing. I don't think it would have because they're very different actresses. Scarlett Johansson, I think, brings a lot of herself to every role that she plays. And it's this interesting combination of wryly intellectual and dripping sex um, that is very rare and I think actually perfect for who Widow is as a character. Not to say that Emily Blunt isn't gorgeous um, and sexy, but she's just got a very different sort of vibe and personality. She, I, If you could make a franchise built around her character in Edge of Tomorrow, I would watch the crap out of that. Well, I'm excited because it does sound like they'll come back and she's gonna do the second one and I'm curious to see where they go with her. Um, but yeah, with, with Brie Larson, the thing that you're getting is she's young and Captain Marvel is absolutely, as they phase Tony and um, Steve and some of the other characters into the background because those guys simply aren't going to be carrying the, the load for the next 10 films. Somebody else is going to move to the center of the Avengers and the Avengers universe, and that character is Captain Marvel. Yeah, it's interesting because um, let's talk a little bit about this. So Captain Marvel is a character that could be a number of different characters, right? Sure. That's the moniker could be given to a number of different characters, but this is Carol Danvers, yeah, which I is believe. true of many of the Marvel characters, right. and that's interesting. They get the mantles get passed. Yes. So this is a specific Captain Marvel they're doing, which is Carol Danvers, which is probably the most traditional Captain Marvel and the one that people most associate with Captain Marvel. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see how she fits into this world because I will say two things. One, we talked about this earlier. Um, there was a part of me that wondered, like, is this the best move for Brie Larson because she's now tied into this probably for nine films that will play over 10 or 12 years, and she's an extraordinarily gifted actress. Um, will she get pigeonholed, A? And two, there's a delicacy to her that I'm curious to see how that translates to playing a superhero, because she is 
a superhero. Oh yeah. Well, I, I look at the work she did in um, Scott Pilgrim versus mm. the World, which is so comic book and yeah. so self-aware. And so clearly she is aware of the visual impact of Envy Adams, as well as the what it is to perform with Demon Head. And it, it's interesting, she got to do a lot in that role. Mm. And there's that little bit of the superpower stuff going on in that movie. She is not precious about her craft. Uh, you know, uh, Brie is somebody who's worked very hard and as I understand it, has clearly had in her head that she wanted both, both sides of this career. That she wants the freedom to do the films like Short Term 12 mm. and Room that move her and that speak to her. But she also understands that right now, Marvel is not only the most stable game in town, but it's fun. There is a fun to be had jumping into this universe and getting to play with everybody. And it is the biggest game of sort of imaginary cowboys and Indians that everybody's throwing in Hollywood. Yeah. This rolling party from film to film. And I'm You're sure the word gets out between jealous. the casts. You know, I, I, I've got to imagine that actors talk to other actors and say, this is a great environment. It's a wonderful place to come and do this. And it has become this thing that is incredibly inclusive. When they bring new cast members in, you know, Paul Rudd has talked about the fact that on Civil War, he felt every bit the member of the splash page as everybody else being new to that group and that there was no sense of, you know, well, we're the old superheroes or we're the real Avengers or we're the... They want to play. They yeah. all want to play. In a separate conversation, we will be talking about um, whether the financial piece of it has shifted since uh, since Perlmutter exited Marvel and whether the, these actors are getting contracts that are more pleasing to them than they have in the past. Because I don't know if you guys know, there's been some upset about how little in relative terms the Marvel stars were paid, um, with the exception of Robert Downey Jr., She's, they did she's not in that position, him. though. She's coming in fresh off an Oscar win. Yeah. Um, she is not, and I, I think is well aware of how important Captain Marvel is to the, the films. So Brie's in a position where she, she could do very well for herself playing this character. Well, I'm very excited to see this. Now, this, again, is not official, but it seems like this is the direction that things are headed. Um, purportedly, she will show up in Infinity War Part 1. Well, I think she has I, to. Yeah. I think she's a big part of connecting the disparate ends of the Marvel Universe to one another, is introducing Captain Marvel as a way of sort of bringing the cosmic and the Earthbound together. Well, I'm looking forward to it. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Do you think this is the perfect Captain Marvel? I do. Um, you can also talk to me on Twitter. I'm at Roth Cornette. I'm Drew at HitFix on Twitter, and you can find me on the Motion Captured blog. And we'll see you on the next Fendemonium.